Okay, we're in Microsoft Excel. We want to calculate some confidence intervals. There are two ways you can do this. You can use the analysis tool pack, or you can use the confidence function. Let's start with the analysis tool pack. First of all, you need to add the add-in file, options, add-ins. Down at the bottom here, it should say Excel add-ins. If not, change it to Excel add-ins. Click on go. Add the analysis tool pack. Click on OK. Then go to the data tab on your ribbon. In the analysis group, click on data analysis. Select descriptive statistics in the list. Click on OK. Input range. So I'm going to select including the title or the values that I want to find confidence intervals for. I need to tick this option here, labels in first row, because I do have a label. And then I need to choose where I want to output the statistics to. I'm going to output to the same sheet and I'll select D2. You can also output to a new worksheet or a new workbook. Right, I want summary statistics and confidence level for mean. I'm going to leave it at 95%. You can change that to whatever value you like. Click on OK, and there's my little summary of statistics. Now it doesn't actually calculate the confidence intervals for you, but that's really easy to do. We'll have upper and lower here. And all you do is you take the mean to get the upper value. You add it to the confidence level value that's been calculated down here. And then to get the lower value, you take the mean and subtract the confidence level value down here. So you can be 95% confident that your mean lies between these two values. So let's do exactly the same calculations, this time not using the analysis tool pack, but using the confidence function. Now I'm gonna copy these headings, and I'm also gonna have a heading for confidence level. So we're going to use the confidence function to calculate the confidence level. And you'll see that there are three versions of that function. Confidence down here, the third one, is a legacy version of the function. So we're interested in dot norm or dot t. Now for this type of calculation, you're looking at a sample of the data. So you're always going to use confidence dot t. And then you have three arguments, alpha, standard deviation and size. Now, alpha relates to this confidence level, 95%, but you're not going to put 95% in, you're going to say 1 minus 95%, which would give you an alpha value of 0 0.05. Comma, standard deviation. So you can use standard deviation dot s. So that's calculating standard deviation based on a sample rather than the entire population, which is what standard deviation dot P does. So I select my product weights, comma, and then size is the size of the sample, which would be a count, the product weights, two close brackets at the end. You can see that this value here is exactly the same as this value down here. So the upper and lower confidence intervals, same calculation as before. So you would take the average or the mean of your product weights and add your confidence level. And for the lower, you'd calculate the average once again, and you'd subtract your confidence level. So two methods, you get exactly the same answers. The great advantage of using functions is obviously these calculations will stay up to date. So if I change this value to 180, you can see that that's true. But the values you've got using the analysis tool pack are static. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next video.